Hey guys, uh, before I start this video, I just wanted to, uh, you know, give a quick update and kind of an apology for another long hiatus this year. This is what the second one this year, like it's insane. I went from like what, like a three and a half month one, and now it's like another like almost three month hiatus. And I really apologize for doing that. And, I mean, there's a lot of reasons, well, there's a couple of reasons why, and uh, I'll get into it right now. Um, well, first, I think a lot of life events kind of started popping up a lot, and it kind of screwed up my recording schedule a lot of the time. Uh, you know, I had I recently moved, and that was a long process, and it kept me from, you know, being able to actively record all the time because it was a very slow move and you know when I wasn't working it was kind of like me having to get more stuff so it was kind of a whole month of that um, with the second thing being my recording time is always is never concrete um, because I don't really have a lot of alone time to record a lot but now that things are starting to get settled, I'm able to, you know, find time to record again overall. And I think the hardest thing uh, I have to admit is one of the biggest reasons that kind of got in the way of recording for a while was that uh, um, my mental health kind of went through another, you know, kind of spiraled again. And it kept me from, you know, it led me to be very depressed a lot and it gave me a hard time finding motivation to hop back onto the, onto this, especially since, as I'm going to explain more and more, is that I had to kind of like shift gears suddenly with my current playthrough and, uh, you know, I had to focus on Brian since that's where, you know, the devs are taking the, uh, the game currently with the current builds. So I had to find time to record all his like little uh, bits and pieces. And half the time there would be issues with the files and, and whenever I was able to record it, it would lag and, and then, you know, just made things worse and made me less motivated to continue. But despite all that, despite, you know, the moving and recent, you know, personal events and you know struggling to find time and all the depression and all the problems um i'm coming back now and i was able to record all the parts uh that i need to record and i want to make sure that i'm back on a consistent schedule again so that said um i'm gonna do my very best not to do another hiatus moment again uh, at least not for a while. Um, I'm hoping to get back to my one to two week of, you know, a video every one to two weeks again. So fingers crossed for that. Um, with that said, though, um, I want to say that this video is going to be kind of messy. It's going to be a lot of sharp cuts. It's not going to be, you know, the best presented. I just wanted to explain that because the uh, when I find when I found out that uh, current updates are focusing on one character, which is Brian. Um, I kind of went back on the first week and found all his little events. I'm sure there's some nuances and some lines I easily missed. It happens, by one at the very least. You know, have uh, showcase his moments that you choose to be around him and all that to get the extra little details before we hop onto his route uh the following week in the game so i do apologize in advance it's a very messy video again uh but this time you know i just wanted to you know show all the different events uh with that said i still recommend anybody who hasn't you know watched uh, watched uh, Santa Lucia playthrough up to this point, I'd recommend you to do so because this video isn't going to catch you up on all the other events as well as the Brian events I already did. I'm just going through the ones that I believe I didn't actually do yet. So with that said, 
I wanted to make sure that uh, th this video was just a quick little, you know, compilation before we move on to his route, uh, which I will, you know, be recording from this point forward. I'm gonna fall back. I'm gonna go back to Homecoming when I can, but because I'm so behind on Santa Lucia, I want to make sure I catch up on those videos before I hop back on to Homecoming. Since right now Homecoming is still kind of in de development with its new updates and everything, I just wanted to you know catch up with Brian and the main Santa Lucia story. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for the wait. I am so sorry. Just a lot of things have been happening. A lot of, you know, things that just demotivated me. And now I'm back at it. So I hope you enjoy this messy, but, uh, uh, but this, uh, this messy video, <laughs> I guess you could say. Welcome back, guys, for more Santa Lucia. So uh, this episode is going to be another kind of messy episode. Um, kind of like the Totsuki episodes earlier, um, because I'm kind of more or less catching up. Because, uh, from what I remember, I know that Brian is going to be the main focus of the roots currently. And, uh, that's how I'm going to, you know, focus on right now. Because even though Carlos is best boy, in my opinion, Brian is the focus right now. And I'm just going to go through a couple of his little sections throughout the first week and then jump into his route so it'll be a little bit of you know jumping around it's gonna be a messy video just warning in advance <laughs> so uh yeah let's continue so we're gonna start on first day we're gonna ask questions with brian he was the last to show up I'd like, I think I'd like a chance to get to know him better. Let's pair up, Brian. Ah, yes! First choice yet again. He pump, pumps his fist and, and cheers. You sure you know how to pick him, Bennett? <laughs> I give him an annoyed stare. Well, let's just get this started, alright? You bet. The two of us separate from the group and sit down on the grass together. Karina, why don't you choose next? Okay. I'd like to team up with, team up with Nate. We've ta we've already talked quite a bit. <laughs> sure, but that doesn't mean there's not more to talk about. Where are you from, for example? Hmm? Alright, that leaves just... me. Carlos walks up to Chris with his arms folded. I yeah. Carlos is already digging into his uh, packet for the pink sheet. Uh, let's get this over with. That's the spirit. <laughs> this were a cartoon, Chris would be dropping sweat like a waterfall. With everyone sp uh, split off into their pairs, the questions begin to fly. Hey. Hmm? I know you're sensitive about being called by your first name. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean any harm. Caught, I'm caught off guard by his apology. I, uh... Thanks. I appreciate it. Don't mention it, Ben. He already has sheet in his, in his lap. Okay. First question. Oh, just like that? Now you're going to check if... I'd like to ask first. Nope. Without looking down at the page, he proceeds. What do you do to have fun? Hmm. I used to play video games a lot as a kid, but I kind of grew out of it. 
I guess I like watching movies and TV shows a lot now. Oh, and I like running. Uh, I like running marathons. <laughs> Does that count? Do you have fun doing it? Yeah. I don't know why I'm embarrassed about it. I should be proud. <laughs> then it counts. <laughs> interesting. I like interesting. Your turn. I look down at my sheet and try to find a nice opening question. Of all the places you have lived, lived in or visited, which is the one you like the best? <laughs> I'm actually an army brat. My dad was an officer in the military until he retired my first year of high school. I've lived on bases in Texas, Oklahoma, Florida, Okinawa. Even spent some time in Taiwan, where my dad's side of the family is from. I think I enjoyed uh, being there the most. I had a chance to reconnect with my roots, you know. I didn't feel out of place. No more out of place than any, any of the others. He shrugs his shoulders. It's something I don't expect for either kids to understand. Is it my turn yet? Uh, sure. Once again, he asks a question without looking at, the, at his page. What's off limits to you? What do you mean? I don't know. That's what the question is. Uh, can I see? Is there more? That's all I said. That's all I said. Seriously. I... Uh, uh, okay, then. I stop for a moment to think about what the question means to me. Well, you already know I don't like being called Bennett. He nods his head. Ah, uh, here's a good one. I really hate it when people make assumptions about me because of my heritage. Oh? What's that? I'm half Native American. I've had dumbasses spread rumors that I wear headgear and dance around fires and stuff. I hate that. Yeah, kids can be pretty mean. I'm a half-breed too. <laughs> I guess I'm lucky in that regard. I've never had to deal with that on the bases. In public high school, though. Well, let's just say it didn't take long for them to back off. Besides, a lot of them were more willing to take what I had to give, if you know what I'm saying. I roll my eyes at his insinuation. Okay, ne next question. What's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Besides ass? My cheeks flare up instantly. I'm kidding. <laughs> this is such a tame question, dude. You should, you should be more adventurous. Huh? He winks at me. My dad's a big fan of chicken feet. Can't say I understand where he's coming from. <laughs> Ew. The weirdest thing I've ever eaten was beef tongue. Duh. Dude, that's nasty. I smile after gaining an unexpected upper hand. You'd be surprised, actually. Moving on. What does a romantic date consist of to you? Uh, huh? Is that seriously one of the questions? Yes, it is. Go ahead. I'm all ears. I'm starting to think I'm being played. Well, to be honest, I'm not super into romantic stuff. I think my ideal date would be something that both of us enjoy doing. I don't know, like watching a movie, taking a walk. Listening to music. Having hot, 
nasty sex on the beach. Oh, what? What? I was trying to give an honest answer here. The answer there. Come on, live a little. Nah, you ruined it. I pout in a teasing manner. I see your, how you're playing the game, Brian. This kitty has claws too. Next question. I pre pretend to read one off the sheet. Would you rather never have sex again or never find true love? Oh, uh, that one's deep. You come up with that one yourself? N no! Shut up. <laughs> I actually have to think about this one. He leans forward, resting his head on a balled up fist. I'd give up true love. Uh, what? People come and go all the time. Who's to say the person you like will even still be there three years from now? What he's saying makes sense, but... Ah, I see the gears in your head turning. I've got another question for you. Uh-oh. So, tell me, are you into girls, or are you into guys? My heart skips a beat and my blood runs cold. I... I'm not comfortable answering that. Really? That's way too personal, and it's not your business in the first place. I stand up and brush uh, brush off my pants. Can't help but feel offended for some reason. I had too little sleep for this. Sorry, I didn't mean to push too far. I thought we were we had something going. I can't do this. My heart's still beating. What's wrong with me? <laughs> oh no, it's, I'm still, uh, it's still fast forwarding. I don't want this. Oh my gosh, I am so glad that I just like changed it to the main menu screen. I apologize. Again, this is a very messy video. I apologize. I'll try to find Brian. <laughs> I'm sure it can't be hard to spot that loudmouth somewhere in here. I make my way towards one of the walls so I can get a better view of uh, who's all here. While leaning against it and folding my arms, I begin to scan the room in between flashes. I wish they would have went with a better lighting system, but I suppose it fits the theme. Not that I've ever been to one, but I imagine this is what a club, a club event feels like. Just more PG-13. <laughs> My mind wanders to Brian again. Yeah, PG-13 with him around? He'd be the first to start grinding on my... Ah! Right as the music uh, begins to change, the strobe, uh, the strobe flashes white right in my eyes, leaving me disoriented. Ow! I cover them and start heading for the exit, trying my best to hold back the sudden urge to puke. There's gotta be a bathroom somewhere. Back in the entrance, I'm able to locate uh, locate them thanks to the conveniently hanging glass saying restrooms over a sidewall. Like usual, I have to push through some mingling bystanders to get to where I'm heading. But, whatever. Shit. Seriously? Even in here? As soon as I step into the men's bathroom, I notice there's at least six other guys already in here. I don't have time for this. Without giving it a second thought, I head for one of the sinks to wash my face. 
I shiver slightly when the cold water seeps past my fur. I should really consider toning down the light show. <sighs> I cut my hands under the water again to prepare another splash. Over by the urinals, I overhear two guys talking about how they're going to get laid tonight. Shake my face. Uh, I shake my head, facing down towards the sink. Careful not to get any excess water anywhere else. Seems even in university, guys are gonna be guys. Hmm. Looking at my reflection in the mirror, I can clearly see the bags forming under my eyes. Today hasn't been the greatest for my complexion, that's for sure. I start combing my hair with my fingers, doing my best I can to straighten everything out. Just need to last a little longer. <laughs> I hope I'm actually going to get some sleep tonight. One of the guys at the urinal flushes his business, then uh, finishes his business, then flushes. Moments later, he's standing next to me, washing his hands in the sink. Yo. I look at him through the... Whoops, that happened. I look at him through the mirror, and I'm surprised that I somewhat recognize him. The crocodile looks down at me with a smile, inviting a response. I look at him through, I look at him through the mirror, and I'm surprised... Oh, whoops, my bad. Hey, how's it going? I'm pretty sure this is the guy I saw Brian tossing a football to on the beach this morning. That shirt is very form-fitting. Pretty chill. Some party, yeah? Yeah, definitely. I find I'm averting my gaze away from his toned body, trying my best to focus on what I'm doing in front of me. I wouldn't be surprised to find out he's on the football team, too. See you around, dude. He shakes his uh, hands in the sink, walking over to the air dryer in the corner. I always hated the sound those things made, especially as a kid. It's like a scree- uh, it's a monster- it's like a monster screaming at you. Chalk that up as another reason I can't stand public bathrooms. I stare at myself in the mirror for a couple more seconds, making sure there isn't any stray hairs that look funny. Oh! I'm suddenly struck by a great idea. I should probably follow that guy. If he was hanging around with Brian earlier, there's a good chance he's hanging out with him right now. Turning to the e exit of the bathroom, I go right by the air dryer, preferring to wipe the moisture off my pants instead of turning that demon machine on. It takes a moment, but I spot the crocodile as he's heading back into the dance hall. I pick up my pace enough to trail behind him. Almost immediately as he breaks the- uh, not breaks- as he enters the room, he starts pumping his fists to the beat, stomping around like a lumbering maniac. God, I hope I didn't look like that when I was dancing with Karina. Hey! I feel, I feel someone knock into me from the side. Unlike me, though, they continue on as if nothing happened. Jeez, have some class. C crap! As I turn my attention back towards the croc, I'm unable to spot him between the pulse, uh, pulsing lights and the countless uh, gyrating bodies on the floor. <sighs> so much for that plan, I guess. While trying to make my way back to Karina, my ears perk up when I hear a familiar whistle nearby. Well, well. <laughs> Look what I found. Brian! Turning around, I'm greeted by the panda's muscular form looming over me. He smirks with his arms folded. The way the, light, uh, the lights dance off his face make it, look like, make it look a bit scarier than he attends. You're looking mighty lost. 
I wonder... I was wondering if you'd show up to this. I figured you'd get a kick out of it, but... Then again... What's that supposed to mean exactly? I look at him incredulously. Nothing. <laughs> Never mind. Just like earlier, he dodges the question. That response, I'm pretty sure he was alluding to some sort of innuendo. <laughs> Can't keep it in your pants, can you? Can't help it. You're just too cute. Teasing cute guys is kind of my thing, if you know what I'm saying. Ha ha. Are you going to hit on me? Are you hitting on me? I stand with my arms folded, tapping the floor with a foot. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. You're certainly not denying my moves like other guys would, so... You tell me. My eyes widen. He, he's asking it again. What should I do? For me, I'd probably shy away from it, to be honest. I hesitate for a moment, giving him ample time to close the distance between us. <clears throat> That's what I thought. <laughs> I'm surprised when he grabs my right hand and guides it to the center of my chest. I could tell you know. But what are you talking about? Every part of my being that's logical is telling me to resist, but... <laughs> There's another part of me just wants to give in. He looks down into my eyes, sweeping me up in his sleazy gaze. I had plans for tonight, but if you'd like, I'll change them. My blood runs completely cold. Or is it hot? It's like all the warmth in my body is concentrating in two specific era areas. I... I... Before I could sputter out a response, he steps away and smiles. Think about it. I shake my head, chasing away the dirty thoughts long enough to think straight again. D dude I was just looking for you so we could hang out. Why do you have to go and make it weird? Duh. Never mind then. I start walking away, feeling ashamed for not standing my ground. Wait! I feel a hand fall on my shoulder. I'm sorry, Ben. I, I didn't mean to freak you out. I'll try to be better about it. It's not that. I just... With a long sigh, I perk back up and smile. Let's keep things simple, okay? Sure. He waves for me to follow him out of the crowd. You got me alone for now. <laughs> roll my, I roll my eyes. Want to dance? Sure. That's kind of what I had in mind. Why didn't you just ask? I'm always down for bumping. He immediately breaks into a series of moves. Ah, <sighs> even now he can't cool it with the innuendo. Guess I should go along with it. I'm more of a shaken guy myself. I join in with, with some moves of my own, feeling the rhythm in my step. <laughs> nice! Where did you learn how to do that? None of your business. I spin around, let loose. Mysterious. I like that. Gives me a little more to crack open down the line. Are you seriously still talking? I step forward and give him a nudge with my shoulder. 
Not everything has to be complicated, you know. For a guy who likes to live in the moment, you're certainly overthinking things. <laughs> I can let loose better than any of these other numb nuts. Watch me. Apparently taking what I said as a challenge, Brian uh, shifts into overdrive, putting all his competitive focus into his dance per dancing performance. Can't help but get into it. Clap along to the beat, spurring him on to even, even more ambitious and creative moves. Not bad. <laughs> See, I've got moves. <laughs> I get lost in the motion, watching as his muscles flex with every move. I can't say I'm not liking the show. Yo! There you are, you asshole! My trance is broken when someone calls out from behind me. <laughs> Die Diego, what took you so long? Hope you weren't thinking about me in there, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah? The crocodile from earlier steps in, slaps a Brian's uh slap Brian's back. Fuck you, man. <laughs> the croc eventually notices my presence. You know this cat? You know this cat? Yeah, this is Ben. Uh he's in the same mentorship group as me. Small world. I saw him in the bathroom not too... I'm using the same voice, aren't I? Whatever. Small world. I saw him in the bathroom not too long ago. Y yeah. I start feeling a little uncomfortable when I realize how close he's standing next to Brian. <laughs> ben! This is Diego. He's also joining the football team this year. He's even got the same scholarship as me. Nice to meet you, Diego. I reach out a nervous hand towards him. Very impressive. And yeah, it really is a small world. <laughs> he grabs my hand and gives it a surprisingly light shake considering his, considering his size. Thanks. When he lets go of my hand, he returns his attention to Brian. Dude, I thought I thought you said you were going to stay put. I was. Then Ben found me. I figured you'd uh, you'd have went looking for someone else to grind up uh, grind grind up on. <laughs> nah, man. I found what I, what I'm interested in. And once uh, my sights are on something, I don't give up until I have it. Uh, <laughs> I can't hold back the nervous laugh. It's like they're multiplying. You're telling me there's two Brian's now? I'm just gonna. As I back up, I accidentally bump into someone elbow, bump into some uh, someone elbowing their side. Ow! Why you? S sorry, Ugh, sorry, it was an accident. Hey! It all happens in an instant. Right as the girl is about to throw her punch at me, Brian pushes pushes me out of the way and t it takes the hit instead. He said it was an accident. Chill out. Ugh. She walks off with whoever she was with. Duh. My shirt's soaked. He looks down while airing it out. Red droplets pour down profusely. Almost looking like... Blood. I feel a pressure in the back of my head. Causing me to get extremely woozy out of the blue. Oh. You okay, Ben? Y yeah. I haven't had much sleep. I think it's catching up with me. I'm gonna call it a night. Huh? 
You don't look so good, dude. It takes all I have to, have to uh, hold back throwing up. <clears throat> ben? I step, I step away from them as, I, as they approach. Where's the key table? Over there. He points towards one of the walls. Without another word, I start heading in that direction. Ben, hold up! I'm sure it'll be fine. Now we've got some space to do our thing, you know? Yeah. After a few moments, I regained control of my stomach. I'm still feeling the vertigo, though. I need to pick up my key. Sure, what's your name? The salamander puts uh, puts out a clipboard and waits for my response. Um, it's probably under Bennett Rivers. Alright, let me find it. Ben! Karina pushes through some people and walks up beside me, putting a hand on my back. I saw you from across the room. Are you okay? No, not particularly. I hold a hand to my stomach. Almost threw up. I think I need to get some sleep. Found your name. Can you sign here, please? Oh, yeah, sure. I do as he says while he fumbles around in a nearby box. I don't want you collapsing on, on your way back. I'm coming with you, okay? No, don't worry about it. I don't want to ruin your night or anything. <laughs> ben, you're not ruining my night. What would ruin it is finding out uh, you uh, kneeled, uh, kneeled over trying to find your room. <sighs> Point taken. And here's your key. The guy pushes a small, clear envelope uh, over to me. Thanks. Would you like to get your key too, miss? No need. I got mine earlier. Come on, Ben. Let's get going. Alright. Karina takes me out to the, out the doorway that leads to Arcadia Field. If I wasn't feeling so sick, I'd be in awe at how beautiful it looks at night, lit up by the sporadic light posts. You holding up? Yeah, I should be able to make it. It's a long walk still. Hey! Brian? I'm caught off guard when Brian slips right uh, right in and starts uh, backpedaling in front of us. I'm taking Ben to his room. He's not feeling well. Yeah, I was there. What happened to Diego? <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about that. Let's just get you home. I blink at him. Not sure what to say. Thanks. What happened to your shirt? Why is it all wet? <laughs> Ben's flirting game isn't up to snuff. I had to catch some punch that was meant for his face. That's not what I... That's not what... You did that for him, Brian? That's the least I could do for someone like Ben. He winks in my direction, but I'm not sure Karina saw it. But yeah, looks like he uh, he took it pretty hard, so I want to make sure that he gets back okay. I merely nod my head. Besides, I could take this time to dry out my shirt while walking beside uh, beside me, uh, beside me, 
opposite Karina. He starts uh, ringing out the excess punch, giving me a clear view of his muscular stomach. He knows exactly what he's doing. How did the meeting with your faculty advisor go? Eh? He said the program I'm in is, uh, uh, is flexible enough for my football schedule. Apparently the classes I have are pretty easy for my first semester. So I'll have time to put most of my effort into what matters. I take it you mean football? <laughs> See? Ben gets it. He's about to slap me in the back, but stops before completing the motion. Wh whoops. <laughs> Bad habit, I swear. Karina leans forward to look at Br uh, Brian past me. What was that? I smirk, catching an opportunity to get some light revenge on the panda. <laughs> he was in the process of giving me a good slap. Brian! He's not feeling well. What are you thinking? Hey, I didn't actually go through with it. I'm just showing that I like him. Keep it in your pants, bub. Do I? I didn't mean it like that. Not everything I say is about sex, you know. You could have fooled me. Huh? <laughs> this time, I'm the one who slaps his back. Clean up, I'm just teasing you. Oh, Ben. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> nice one. Before long, we find ourselves in front of the freshman dormitories. So, how does this work? You just open the door, right? Huh? He shakes the door in, in place a bit, but it doesn't budge. The hell? How are we supposed to get in if they, they lock the front door? Hmm. Does it have something to do with this thing here? She points at the strange device on, on the nearby wall. What is it? I kneel down in front of it to get a better view. It's a long black machine that almost looks like a card reader. Oh, of course. Let me see. He pushes us out of the way so he can look for himself. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. We used to have these things all over the bases. What cards would read it, though? Are we supposed to register our credit cards or something? Isn't it obvious? He digs into his pocket and pulls out what I assume is his wallet, then flips out a specific card. We use the student ID cards we got earlier. He smiles at Karina as he wipes it down the uh, device. Swipes it down the device. Wait, was it white? Swipes it down. Voila! Huh. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I reach forward and open the now unlocked door. Perfect. Now let's get inside before I pass out. Right. I climb up a small, I climb up a small uh, flight of stairs and greeted by two perpendicular halls. The walls of each are lined with uh, evenly spaced doors. I notice there are small decorations on each door, along with the occasional bolts and board in, in the spaces between. Behind me, there's another set of stairs that leads to the floors above. How do I know which room is mine? 
your key should have the room number on it. I know mine did. Hey, my uh, room's down the hall here. If you don't mind, I think I'm going to change my shirt and head back to the party. Oh? Ugh. And here I thought he came all the way here for me. Figures he'd have an ulterior motive. Thanks for coming with us, Brian. You didn't have to. Eh, don't mention it. I needed the break. <laughs> I can't help but feel a little disappointed. I reach into my pocket and pull out the envelope with my key. To my surprise, the room assignment is also written on, on the front sticker. Oh, here it is, I guess. 314. That means you're room 14 on the third floor. Yeah, I know. We have a similar setup at Bernard Academy. I'm room 207 if you ever need me. Thanks. I step away from the awkwardly and I step away from them awkwardly and start heading up the stairs. Where are you going? Don't worry about uh, about hel uh, helping me find my room. I can manage that much. Go ahead and do what you need need to do. Duh. He leaves my field of view as I wrap around the, the next flight of uh, next flight in the stairwell. Karina climbs a short way up uh, the first set and looks up at me. Are you sure? Yeah, don't worry about it. I ruined your evening too much already. But you didn't... I put a hand up to stop her. Please. Just let me do this, okay? Alright. Text me in the morning, okay? You got it. The full weight of zero, uh, uh, the full weight of zero sleep hits me all of a sudden. Why did I feel so offended by Brian wanting to change, uh, uh, wanting to change his shirt? I can't blame him for not wanting to walk around with punch, making his chest fur sticky. Still, I don't know. I felt like he was doing this for me earlier. I guess I shouldn't expect much from him, given everything I've learned about him today. Besides, that crocodile was all over him back there. Images of what they'll probably be doing tonight go through my mind. For some reason, I feel this strange pit in my stomach. For a guy I just met. What the hell, Bennett? Pull yourself together. I step out the side entrance of the UC, which leads me onto the overlook above the sports fields. Huh. Looks like the sun's starting to set. There goes the last day before I officially start college classes. Sandwich and book bags in tow, I descend the steps, while my gaze focuses on the various groups that have assembled on the grass. It's a bit early, but it looks like the flood the floodlights have been turned on to illuminate the area for them. The group closest to me is circled around someone speaking in the middle, presumably their coach. He tosses a volleyball up in the air and slams it over the nearby net faster than I've ever seen in high school, which earns him a couple of claps and the occasional gasp. <laughs> All the coaches I've ever known like to show off. Can't say I'm surprised to see that tr this, that trend continues into university. As I continue down the path towards the freshman dorms, I pass by the soccer team, the rugby team, the tennis team, and... Hmm? I catch a glimpse of Brian's distinctive panda fur in a group close to the stadium. Next to him stands the crocodile I saw him with last night. His name was Diego, wasn't it? 
There seems to be a divide in the group, with the younger freshman students standing on one side and the older students on the other. Their coach walks up and down the, uh, the line between them, though I'm not able to hear what he's saying to, to them from all the way over here. Probably some typical coach stuff like, drop and give me a hundred maggot and shit. Man, I wish I understood why people found these things so appealing. I can watch sports easy enough, I guess, but some people go out of their way to make these games their life. I mean, they're just games, right? Huh? I'm caught by surprise when Brian happens to look in my direction. He breaks formation and gives me a huge, exaggerated wave with a smirk. What a... I feel my mouth curve at the sides when his coach walks up behind him while he's trying to get my attention. I do my best to gesture a warning to him, but the coach looms down over him and apparently yells in his ears. Oh shit. Brian's eyes widen before he swiftly breaks into a sprint around the per uh, perimeter of the field. What a dumbass. I roll my eyes and continue the trek. I approach the sophomore residence halls on my left. Several mentors from last night appear to be assisting late sophomores with moving in. A young bear girl runs past me, dragging out a rolling luggage bag behind her, and her parents follow suit not long after. Man, what's the rush? It's not like you're late for orientation or anything. Yo, Ben! Brian catches up to me on the field and slows his running pace. Hey, Brian. I saw you and Karina leaving the cafe earlier. You didn't hear me? You did? I look over at him, raising an eyebrow. Yeah, Diego and I heard they had, they had some killer croissant sandwiches to go and decided to check it out. You were leaving the place when you were in line, and when we were in line. <laughs> I see you're hanging out with Diego still. Dude's pretty chill, and we like the same things. If you know what I'm saying. I roll my eyes yet again. Fascinating story, brah. Uh, give him a chance. You might like him too. He seemed to take a liking to you last night. Really? How could you tell with how much he was grinding up on you? Do I detect a hint of jealousy in your voice? Ben, there's more than enough of me to go around. All you have to do is ask. I'm not playing your little game, Brian. Have a nice run. Do I? shake my head uh, side to side and turn the corner towards the art building. He's such a dumbass. Alright, you two have fun. I'm gonna head downstairs to take a breather. I walk back to the treadmill I used and grab my back backpack. See you in a bit. Uh... Uh, okay. Bye, Ben. Huh. Karina sounded disappointed. God. She knows I can't read minds, right? Still, I'd rather do something other than stretches right now. I descend the staircase and look around for any signs of Brian. Hmm. Pretty sure I saw the football team come inside the fitness center. For a rowdy bunch, they're surprisingly quiet. Ah! Suddenly realize why I'm not hearing the sound of a bunch of jocks clamoring around the building. In one of the side rooms, I can see through the uh, glass window, the team is gathered to w lift weights. The wolf, I assume, is the coach, paces around the room, 
most likely making sure his students are lifting correctly. He's wearing a baseball cap with the school seal on it. Oof. Stop my tracks for a second when I see he barrels down on one of the guys, kneeling down uh, to yell in his face and throwing a towel on him. Yeesh. I'm glad I decided, this, uh, didn't decide on sports as my field of choice. The last thing I need is some muscle-bound jackass screaming in my face all the time. And again... Ew! Huh? I absentmindedly walk past a girl heading for one of the workout stations. She holds a, fin uh, she holds a finger up to her nose and shakes her head. Ouch. That was really rude. I look down at my shirt and see the huge sweat stains surrounding my armpits and running down my chest. Shit. I really wish I brought a change of clothes for this. I sniff under one of my armpits. Sh shit. Ugh, fucking reek. No wonder that girl was disgusted. I look around the room again. My face is burning red right now. I can feel it. Aha! Here we go. In the far corner, I see a hallway that leads to the men's locker room. I'm suddenly feeling really gross and nasty. I could use a shower. I step inside, immediately noting how upscale everything looks. There's a lot of space to maneuver around in here, and the lockers are surprisingly high class. I hear the sound of showers running around the back corner, suggesting I'm not alone in here. Ugh. I hope this isn't going to be awkward. One look down at my shirt again uh, steals my resolve. I need to get washed up, one way or another. Traveling deeper into the, into the room. I keep a lookout for a nice, available locker to store my backpack in. I probably don't need anything fancy like a rental locker. Hmm. I peer around the corner of the latest aisle before the showers. There's a couple of towels on the bench in the middle, and one of the lockers is hanging open. These don't look like they're anything but temporary storage, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I can hear the murmurs of guys talking to each other in the showers. I can't really tell how many, but it's at least two. Oh boy. I finally find a locker I'm satisfied with. It's deeper down the hall than the others, probably not one that anyone in a hurry would bother to use. Ideally, that means my stuff should be safe for as long as a quick shower takes. After opening it, I stuff my backpack into it and attempt to pry the shirt off my back. D Duh! Mm. Manages to get stuck on my head. Damn, I got a lot more sweaty than I thought I did. I do my best to unstick the shirt from my fur. My blood runs cold. Need some help there, man? Uh <laughs> Well, well, well. <laughs> Look who it is. B Brian? I had a feeling I'd run into you. I saw you running on the treadmill when we came in. My eyes widen in shock as he tosses my shirt uh, onto the bench. He stands proudly before me. Not even bothering to cover up with a towel. Uh, hey, uh. Don't you just hate it when your sh shirt gets stuck to you? Uh, I can't think straight. Uh, it's too distracting. <laughs> I, take, I take it you like what you see. Mmm. I take a step back, but the only thing it does is give me a better view of everything. Go ahead. There's no shame in looking. 
We've got the same parts after all. All right, focus, Ben. You've seen your fair share of dicks, so don't lose your cool over Brian's. <laughs> Shit, it ain't working. I'm glad you appreciate my physique. <sighs> he hunches forward and flexes his muscles. What good is a hot bod if you can't show it off every now and then? I, I... You know, these aren't the only muscles I know how to flex. If you know what I'm saying. I finally managed to break eye contact with him, grabbing my shirt and stuffing it into my locker with my backpack. Cool it, dude. I'm just here to take a shower. I smell really bad. Nah, you smell fine. You just smell like a football player after a long game. That reminds me of this one guy from high school. D damn it, Brian. Can you put your cl some clothes on? I get a little fed up being put on the spot like this. It's getting harder and harder to hide what's going on for me below the belt. Well... It was worth a try, at least. He seems to give up and opens one of the nearby lockers. I'm still feeling a little self-conscious as I slow my undressing pace down to a, to a crawl. Why are you taking a shower? Isn't the rest of the team lifting weights? Coach made us all wash up before weight training. He says he doesn't want our sweaty asses leaving stains all over the equipment. We've been taking showers and shifts. Who are you talking to, dude? It's about time you finished, Diego. Once with reptiles and long showers. Asshole. I have scales I need to wash under, unlike you fuzzy freaks. A large crocodile walks around the corner, dripping water everywhere. F fucking hell. What's with these guys and not using towels? I avert my gaze and... Slowly, uh, slip my pants off. <laughs> you wish you had you had what I have. Fuck you, man. If you insist, I wrap one of the towels I laid out for us around my waist and slip my underwear off. Let me just get out of your way. <laughs> See you around, Ben. Wait, is that the cat from last night? Brian waves at me while I dash down the hall for the showers. Whoops. Excuse me, little man. S sorry. I nearly run into another football player as I run around the corner. This one at least had the decency to wear a towel. Ugh. Why does Brian always have to make things everything awkward? On our way out of the building, we pass by the room where the football players are working out. Peering in, I see it's Brian. Uh, Brian's turn with the bar barbell. The coach continues to pace back and forth, barking orders at the players. They raise and fall with the barbells on the coach's orders. If I didn't know any better, I'd say this looks more like an army training than football training. Brian happens to make eye contact with me as I'm walking. The smirk he pulls off what looks like perfect form. What a show off. Yeah, I think I'll look into it, Brian. Gonna have to research it myself before I give it the final word, though. Ah, oh, yes! We're gonna be frat bros, dude. Hmm. <laughs> Ugh, disappointing. Not entirely unexpected, though. Shrug my shoulders. It's all part of the college, the college experience, right? 
It's weird you're so against it when you're the one who gave me the real tour of the school. Eh, you might have a point there, kid. He holds up a hand and starts heading for the staircase. I'm heading out. Got class upstairs I don't give a shit about, but would rather not miss. See you later, Russell. Take care, dude. I watch as the line disappears around a bend in the stairwell. Where are you heading, Ben? Brian folds his arms and smiles. Room room 14, if I remember correctly. I should. I studied that schedule hard before leaving the dorm. Hold on a second. Brian pulls out a piece of paper from his pocket and looks it over. Intro to journalism, right? Y yeah. Oh no, don't tell me. We're in the same class. <laughs> wow, what a coincidence. I glance around the hall, trying to avoid eye contact. What's wrong? Uh, nothing. It's just... Seems a little planned is all. Isn't that the point of the mentorship groups, though? I... We're organized together based on similar interests. You actually paid attention to what Chris was saying? How could I ignore that cute face? <laughs> really, though, it seems like the school thought this all through. We begin walking together towards the journalism classroom. You sharing a class with anyone else? Nate and I have public speaking at 1pm. I... see. Huh. So why'd they put you in journalism anyways? It's part of the program I chose. Coach recommends that everyone have a fall black, fallback plan for when, when we retire from the sport. I'd like to be a sports news anchor when this is all done. I turn my head towards him and raise an eyebrow. Do you even have, an, have the work ethic for that man? Oh, come on. How hard can it possibly be? Uh... I think back to how Dr. Dubois described the journalism program. You're gonna be working, hard, uh, working a lot harder than you think, Brian. When we arrive at the door, I notice there's a sign taped over the inset window. Do I? Brian gets closer and lifts it up to re read it better. What does it say? Journalism 41 has been relocated to the hall that will never be named. 202. We apologize for the inconvenience. Huh? Sounds like we got some distance to cover. Shit, what time is it? Pull out my phone to check. Ugh, it's almost ten. I tried hard to be early this time, too. When I look back up, Brian has left my field of view. Field of, field of view. Duh! You better start running, dude. D damn it. I approach the middle door and grip the handle. The voice calls louder to me, making it hard to resist. With the turn of the latch, I push the, I push the door open and enter. For a moment, I'm surrounded by white blankness before it reforms into a suburban cul-de-sac. Two-story homes arranged in a circle with only a single road leading out from them. I stand on the porch of one of these homes, staring out at the small group of children tossing around a football in the road. Across the street is a man dressed in an, in army fatigues, mowing a front lawn. The boys in the center yell, scream, and laugh while playing clearly having a great time. 
One boy in particular seems to take the initiative, calling shots and making remarkably clean passes to the others for his age. Go long, Eddie! The young panda steps back and prepares a throw to one of the others, who's running in the opposite direction and looking over his shoulder. Right before the panda tosses the ball, though, the kid trips over a round pavement marker, falling knees first onto the pavement. Ow! The kids all run over to check on their fallen comrade. Ugh. Owie. The panda kneels down and pulls something out out of his pocket. You're okay, Eddie. I've got a band-aid for this. He pats the other kid on the back before applying the bandage on his scraped knee. Thanks, Brian. The panda stands tall and proud. <laughs> Don't mention it. Not long after, the sound of a car driving up the road causes the kids to get off the blacktop. They walk together towards the pavement underneath the shade of a tree. An SUV pulls into the driveway of one of the homes in the court. My mom's home! The panda takes off towards the car as a relatively young brown bear gets out of the driver's side. She opens the passenger door behind her allowing a little bear girl, probably no older than four, to hop out. Mom! Ah, good, you're here. Help me take in the groceries, Brian. The panda does as he's told, following his mother as, he, as she opens the back of their car and takes bags of food out. He turns to address his friends. You guys keep playing without me! When he looks back inside the car, something catches his attention. Mom, what are those boxes for? His mother takes out, takes one out and sets it on the floor, placing bags of groceries inside for easy carrying. Daddy got reassigned to another state, dear. We need to start preparing to move. In an instant, the jovial cheer the panda had seconds ago is wiped off his face. Uh, again? But, but we just got here. Please don't start this up again, Brian. You know we have to follow Daddy. The panda's friends have already started, started up a new game, yelling loudly in excitement as the competitive spirit takes over. But, but... My friends. <sighs> Stay strong, little soldier. You'll make new ones. You'll always do. He turns to look at his friends longingly, tears forming in his eyes. His mother lifts up the box she filled and starts carrying it to the front door of their house. The little girl follows closely behind her. And when the door opens, she dashes inside and disappears behind a wall. Kimberly, please be careful! The panda stands and watches as his friends continue playing without him. When one stops to wave at him, he shakes his head and wipes away the tears. I'll, I'll be back soon, guys. His little hands take as many bags of groceries as they can handle. Then he follows his mother into the house. Once he's out of sight, the world seems to fade into white nothingness again. I close my eyes and breathe for a second. I have this intense feeling of loneliness in my chest. All I know is I don't want to be in this place anymore. So I head back through the metal door behind me. It feels like I saw something I shouldn't have. 
like I've invaded somebody's privacy. It's hard to shake. Brian can be a bit lazy, but at least he's reasonable. I think I'll have a better time working on my on the essay with him instead of Carlos. Brian, I want to team up with you. It's because you got a man crush on me, huh? Sh shut up. <laughs> Fine by me. Are you okay with with just me, Carlos? I prefer that by a mile. Then it's settled. Woo! Great job, Ben! Take one for the team. D don't put it like that. Brian moves back to the desk he had earlier and waits for me to follow. Come on, dude! I'd rather not ha give. Excuse me. I'd rather not give the tiger any more ammo. Let's get started. Right. Okay. I take the next the desk next to him. Drop my backpack on the floor below, and pulling up my copy of the brainstorm sheet. So, what does a good society mean to you? I decided to join up with the beach crew. Being stuck in a bus for several several hours really made me crave some fresh air. The beaches I saw as we drove by looked really tantalizing. Plus, I'll be able to tag alongside Brian, so I'm sure I won't be bored for long. Getting up, getting paired up with him wasn't particularly hard, and he seemed appreciative of the company. Lucky for me, he's the forgiving type. We're led alongside a, a winding trail by park rangers down, down to a secluded beach. After a quick briefing, we split off into pairs and scour the beach for trash. I've gotta say, the view is absolutely breathtaking. The blue ocean, the azure sky, and the waves crashing on the shore. Kinda wish I didn't have to work so I could lie down and take it all in. Well, maybe not lie down. It's pretty windy here. I can feel the sand blowing into my fur already. It doesn't take long before I trip over an old discarded can. Crap! Ugh! all the places to litter. I open up my black garbage bag and use the large pincer the rangers gave me to pick up the can. The rangers instructed us on how to use these things. We're to make sure we don't touch any of the litter we find down here with our bare hands, just in case there's something sharp inside, uh, hidden inside. I don't think I would have thought of that. I look in both directions up the shoreline and see the other pairs are already hard at work. Brian and I start working our own section, and the minutes start slowly ticking by. God, these pincers are actually hard to work with. I struggle to get them to clip onto anything. While Brian is over here grabbing things and dropping them in his, in, in his bag in a single motion. How frustrating. I sigh as a bag of chips seemingly become liquid and escape my every stab. First time using one, eh? I look up startled. No, no. I've, I've uh, worked cleanup before. Just not on the windiest beach in California, is all. He chuckles at my comment. Well, 
Just take it one step at a time. You'll get the hang of it. He pauses for an instant to snatch up a rogue can of soda, not being carried away by the wind. Uh, just make sure you don't open your bag facing the wind. <laughs> Unless you want to start all over again. That's always cool. Speaking from experience... Yeah. It was on a hill, too. Wasn't a fun time, let me tell ya. He shrugs as he recalls the memory. I tighten my grip around the bag. I think I'd rather avoid having something like that happen to me. <laughs> Time rolls by slowly as we make our way across our stretch of the shore. I swear, it feels like there's more trash here than grains of sand. I feel a familiar crunch under my right foot. Ugh. Yep. Another one. How are there this many cans here? <laughs> Lots of wild beach parties, I bet. Seems like it's more trouble than it's worth with all this wind and sand. I scoff at the idea. Can't say I'm much of a fan myself. Oh, what? <laughs> Brian? Not looking parties? I prefer taking my guys to a nice cozy bedroom for some fun, if you know what I'm saying. Ugh, should have known. I turn my attention to a half-buried bottle, struggling to pick it up with the pinchers. People litter because they don't care. Hmm. That's a strong statement. I managed to wrestle this bottle out of its sandy prison and stuff it in a plastic one. If it takes more than zero effort, people won't even bother. Reminds me of some of the kids I used to know. You'd think living on an army base would be enough to teach the little shits not to litter. But there were always a few of them that fell above the law. It's not like they faced any consequences, so why change? He shakes his head. I never liked those kids. I nod along to his rant, focusing on a stray piece of tissue. I don't see how people can be like that. One time in 10th grade, I dropped a bag of tortilla chips. It got carried away by the wind and I couldn't chase it down. Felt like crap the whole day, so I can't even imagine littering on purpose. <laughs> That's because you're a good guy, dude. He hesitates for a moment before continuing. Well, a good guy with a nasty temper, but still. My face flushes red instantly. I know he's just joking around, but I can't help but feel called out. <laughs> I scratch the back of my neck, struggling to find an adequate reply. I, I swear, I'm usually very patient. This week's just been crazy overwhelming, I guess. Yeah, I expected a crazy first week. He stabs his pincers into the sand as he reminisces. I'm sure it'll calm down once the routine sets in, you know? I nod back at him as the gears in my head start to, t start to turn. Payback time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, talk about a crazy week. So I take it you've been fooling around with that Diego guy, huh? For a brief, mo a brief moment, he seems taken aback that I brought, I brought it to the table. I didn't think I'd meet such a cool dude on my first day. Glad I got to hit it off with him. Great ass too. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but I'm kind of intrigued to hear more. I know I'm jumping headfirst into a minefield, but 
My curiosity has to be quenched. Speaking of Diego, are you guys, um, a thing? Smooth. I don't do, I don't really do steady, if that's what you're implying. Neither does he. He's a nice dude, but we're keeping it casual. I, I see. Okay. Can't say I'm surprised. Flings are definitely more his style. I focus back on my task. So, you ever do it do it on a beach? Stop dead in my tracks. Yeesh. That's a way bolder. That's way bolder than my comparatively tame question. You have done it before, haven't you? Yeah. First Karina, now Brian. Why has my sex life become such a hot, such a hot topic? Y yeah, of course I've done it before. Can't say I don't deserve this one though. I think I can. I see a way I can get the upper hand here. I'm not a virgin, if that's what you're asking. I answer in the most straightforward fashion possible, trying to not show any signs of embarrassment. Really? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Didn't expect that. <laughs> he definitely seems to be enjoying this. No offense, dude, but you gotta give off this virgin prude aura. I shrug my shoulders and grab another piece of trash. Well, not everyone's wired the same way as you, Ryan. Smirk back at him. I <laughs> might be enjoying this more than I care to admit myself. I'm perfectly content keeping my list small. If you know what I'm saying. Brian chuckles back. Ooh, <laughs> this kitty's got claws. Well... If you ever decide to try swinging the other way, I think you already know I've got a thing for feisty cats like you. I'm about to retort, but the words get stuck in my throat. If he's down with it, then I'm down with it. Why shouldn't I just accept? I've got nothing to lose, and God knows I could use the relief. It'd be a fun time for sure, and Brian's super sexy. I know a lot of people who love to love a chance to sleep with someone like him. And here he is, offering it to me. No, I don't think I can. Saying yes right now would feel wrong somehow. There's still too many variables, and I'm not quite sure how much of this is just Brian teasing. Or genuine flirting. I like Brian, and I don't want to mess mess this up or a stupid, stupid misunderstanding. And just like that, the topic drops. <sighs> Something tells me this is going to be a long day. We continue working for what feels like an eternity. I check my phone regularly, but eventually stop because it's it gets too demoralizing. Around 6.30 p.m. though, the rangers call us all back to regroup. They thank us for our services and we're led back to the main cabin where we meet up with our mentorship groups again. Ben? The sound of my name enters my ears. I try as hard as I can to fight back the tears, but... All I can do right now is wipe my eyes and hope I look presentable. Y yeah? I turn to face my guest.
Leaning on the railing at the bottom of the stairs is... Brian. You're looking kinda lonely up there. What do you want? I'm not in the mood for your teasing. I snap back at him and return my gaze to the sunset. Ugh. Forgot about your temper. I probably came on too strong there. I can hear his footsteps as, he's, as he climbs the stairs. Um... I'm sorry for that. It's okay. Do you mind if I join you for a bit? I crank my head to the side to get a better look at him. Forgive me if I don't trust his intentions. <laughs> Now's not the best time, dude. Relax, Ben. I just want to check in on you. Is that so bad? I let out a soft sigh. No. It's not. Good. He decides to lean on the railing next to me. You look upset. Is everything okay? Y yeah I just... I had a falling out with Russell. It's no biggie. Brian goes quiet for a moment. I'm... Sorry to hear about that. I've had my fair share of falling out with friends, so I can relate. Ugh. I've been in such a bad mood lately, and I can't explain why. I almost fucked up my friendship with you two. God, I suck. Why do you guys even put up with me? Brian rests a hand on my shoulder and gives it a light squeeze. Well, I can't speak for the rest of them. But for me, it's because I care about you. You do? That's unexpected to hear from him. He smirks at me as the sunlight makes his eyes shine. I think I've said it before, but if I, ha if I haven't... If I haven't, I'll tell you now. I think you're really cool. S stop that. Y y you're just trying to butter me up, aren't you? Dude, can you just listen to me for a second? Ugh. Guess it's my attitude coming back to bite me in the ass. He shakes his head in a surprise, surprising act of shame. Look, I'm being 100% serious right now. No joking, no ulterior motives, or whatever. I think you're a really cool guy, and I'm glad we ended up in the same mentorship group. He stops for a moment, probably trying to gauge my reaction. I don't know. A part of me really admires you. We're a wild pack of wild we're a pack of wild personalities and then there's you. <laughs> I'd say you're the most important part of the part of our group. What? I mean it. You're the glue that keeps us together. The one that keeps us grounded. If it wasn't for you, I think I would have transferred to another group by now. He looks out at the sunset. Maybe even dropped out. Why would you do that? <laughs> I don't know. School's School work's really not my thing, but... I did it so I could play football, you know? Finding out I didn't make a, make the cut for quarterback really... <clears throat> he clears his throat, clearly preparing to say something uncomfortable for him. It 
really bruised my ego. I'm sorry. Me being a dick didn't help much, huh? Nah. Don't beat yourself up over it. Look. I guess what I'm trying to say here is... I think of you as a really good friend. Th thanks. I figured with how crazy things have been for you, it, it's probably something you needed to hear. I, I think of you as a really good friend, too. <laughs> I notice a distinct red hue peeking out through his facial fur while rubbing the back of his head. <laughs> the, that's good. He holds an arm out towards me as if he's trying to flex. Butter there, man. What? You've never done this before? I don't understand what this is where this is going. Duh. <laughs> Duh. This is how this is how cool guys shake hands. Here, it's like this. He grabs my arm and angles it in the same way he, he was holding his. You do this, and then you put your hand in mine. To complete the gesture, he repeats the form, making what looks like a tight W between us. We grab each other's hand, and then... He dips his arm slightly, pulling me down with it. We shake. I see. <laughs> feels like something I showed you. Feels like I showed you some. Showed you a secret handshake or something. Guess that means we're friends for life, huh? <laughs> we stand there together, watching as the sun finally disappears behind the water. Eventually, the remaining light follows suit. My path is my own to choose. Right now, I choose... Brian leans forward in the seat next to me sliding his finger along the screen of his phone. His brow is furrowed, suggesting he's really focused on what he's reading. Well, the stress of the day has started getting to him. It's definitely been an or ordeal getting through everything. <laughs> he taps on his phone, apparently not liking what he saw. Everything okay, Brian? He cranks his head to the side, just enough to acknowledge me, but keeps his eyes on the screen. Yeah. Just that the... the, the, the yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Just that a team of mine made a really stupid trade. I raise an eyebrow. My dad mentioned stuff like this before to his friends, but I never really followed sports much, so I don't quite know what that means. How so? They thought it was a good idea to trade their star star player for three bottom of the barrel ones from another team. Seriously, wish I could bring the next of that dumbass manager sometimes. Ugh, oh, I get it. <laughs> so sports teams are able to trade their players out of the blue. Don't they have to wait for an off season or something? Not always. It depends on the league. The way that shine lights on his face really accentuates his masculine features. The strong brow, the chiseled jawline. I wish I could just... See something you like? What? I quickly snap out of my little daydream. I know it'll look good, Ben, but you gotta give a man his space. 
I notice he's angled away from me so I can see what's going on his, on his screen. Th that's not what I was doing, I swear. Trust me, dude. You don't want to see the uh, kind of stuff I keep on this thing. Or maybe you do. But you're gonna have to do something really nice for me if you want to, want me to show you. <laughs> Why do you always have to make things awkward? I scoot away from him and do my best to hold back a blush. I, I'm sorry. I wasn't really thinking exactly. Guess I have a lot on my mind. I didn't mean to stare at you. Oh, okay. I didn't didn't mean to put you on the spot there. It's all cool with me. He leans forward again and continues messing around on his phone. I let out a deep sigh and return my gaze out the window. Would be nice to have someone to talk to about what happened out there. There's a lot of things that aren't sitting well with me, but... Hey. Yeah, what's up? I don't move my uh, move my head to look at him. Or... Not, not that it's any of my business or anything. But you're not looking too hot right now. Jeez, thanks. Just what everyone wants to hear. I'm not talking about your stud and good looks, man. My heart flutters for a second. I mean, you look like you're not doing well. Do you want to talk about it? I pause for a moment, then nod my head. Yeah, I think I do. I fold my arms and lean back in the seat. Well, I'm all ears. Shoot. Puts his phone away and turns towards me. This is surprisingly attentive coming from him. Figured he would have tried to blush, uh, brush this off as just nerves or something. Man, everything just went to shit all of a sudden. First I have that fight with Russell, then Dr. Hernandez ends up dead. I have to catch myself before continuing on to the shenanigans I caught Zack and Chris up to last night. What the hell happened? Yeah, I know what you mean. Why was the president even there to begin with? You'd think she would make uh, she would made an appearance or something, right? My ears perk up at the odd statement. What do you mean? Wasn't she there at dinner giving a speech about civic duty? Do what? He seems genuinely dumbfounded at what I said. Yeah, she was there at dinner. Don't you remember? You guys were all talking about how the service trip went and when she showed up. Ben, what are you talking about? He stares down at me. I'm feeling that creepy tingle crawling up my spine again. You fell asleep at the table. We tried waking you up, but you were out cold. When you finally came to, you headed straight for the Overlook. Good thing Zack told me where to, where to find you. I can't believe what I'm hearing. So you're saying Dr. Hernandez wasn't there at that evening? No way. The police said she drowned around 2 p.m. yesterday. What the fuck? I comb my hair back with my fingers while I process this new tidbit of information. You can't be serious. 
Did I dream it all up? Ben, are you alright? You look like you've just seen a ghost. I shake my head. Look, I'm going to tell you something right now. Please, don't think any less of me because of it, okay? You have my word. He holds a hand up to his heart. I sort of... <sighs> How do I phrase this? I've had chronic nightmares ever since I was a kid. Is that so? Are you thinking this might have been a nightmare you had? Yeah, I think so. They're always so vivid. Sometimes I have a hard time telling the difference between dream and reality. Uh, that sucks, dude. I knew you had problems, but... I didn't think they were this bad. Great, now I'm turning to Sideshow Ben for my new group of friends. Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm? I look, at a, I look up at him in surprise. Didn't expect you to be so invested in my health. You're my friend, dude. I appreciate the sentiment, but what exactly can you do? Uh, well, I mean, he scratches the side of his head and thinks. I guess I don't know. They're just nightmares. Everyone has them. I just have more of them than usual, that's all. There's no need to drag the guy I've had, I've, I have a crush on into my problems. Fair enough. He takes the moment to stand up and stretch his arms. Damn, how much longer is this bus ride going to take? I've got a couple hours to go still. I think I'm gonna take a nap then. Wake me up if you need me. And don't try to do anything spicy while I'm asleep. I'd prefer to be conscious for that. <laughs> I gave him a slight knock on the shoulder. You perv. He snickers under his breath, then folds his arms and closes his eyes. Even from back here, I'm able to get a good view of what everyone else is doing. A couple rows up, Karina and Shay are sitting together. They seem to be talking about something, but I can't quite hear it over the sound of the bus driving. All things considered, they seem to be in high, pretty high spirits. At the front of the bus, Chris sits alongside Layla. Chris has a clipboard pulled out and the two of them seem to be f uh, filing some of the paperwork can't imagine they're having a great time right now either they probably knew the president better than anyone else on the bus I wonder what the other mentors are going to say when they find out the news speaking of people taking the news hard Zack sits in the front row, all to himself. He hasn't said a word to me since we got back to the cabin. I can see his reflection in the window. He looks very distant. I wonder if he knew Dr. Hernandez, too. He's such a weird dude, Zack. What the hell were you up to in the forest last night, anyway? doubt you'll ever give me give an answer to me oh well pull out my phone to check the time you should probably be getting back to campus in about two hours the quicker I could put this day behind me the better the bus pulls into the parking lot a little after 10 p.m. The first thing we do, uh, the first thing we do, the moment we step out of the vehicle, is gather into our mentorship groups. 
Looking around, it's clear whether the last one's returning to campus. Not another bus in sight. Chris gathers his things and meets, uh, meets up with us, looking more somber than usual. I hope everyone is here. I think so. Let's see. There's Ben, Nate, Carlos. Wait, what about Zach? Shouldn't he be here with us? I'm right here. Zack steps out from behind the panda. Duh! Y you scared me! How long were you sta uh, standing there? I've been hiding behind you the whole time. I followed you out of the bus, too. Didn't you see me? I guess not. Brian puts a hand behind his head and smiles nervously. You should try speaking up, dude. Looks like we're all present and accounted for, Chris. That's good. Did everyone grab their lug luggage before getting off the bus? Yeppers. Is there anything we need to do now? No, no. I'll handle the rest of the paperwork and make sure you all get credit for attendance. Though there's supposed to be some representatives from the school here to greet us. Hmm. What for? Chris's expression turns grim again. Well, this was a traumatic experience for everyone. We're supposed to get psychological evaluations from a few of the school counselors. Oh. I feel this tingling sensation in the back of my head again. That sounds fun. It's slowly crawling its way down my spine. You're not expected to attend, but I think it would be for the best if everyone does. It comes to rest at a spot a little below my left shoulder blade. The pain is intense. I feel very dizzy all of a sudden. Shit. This isn't right. I think I'd rather just go to bed, if you don't mind. The pain feels like something lodged itself into me. I can't let anyone else know something's wrong, though. Then they'll make me stay for the counseling and whatever else they have in mind. Step away from the group to start heading for the dorm building. Are you sure you don't want to stay, Ben? What's there to talk about? I'd rather not dwell on it. What happened happened. There's nothing we can do to change it. I don't mean to be so blunt, but... I suppose you're right. Sometimes it's just better to rip the bandage off and instead of pulling it off slowly. Zack, are you ready to go? I look back, trying to spot my roommate, but he's nowhere to be found. Huh. Did he already leave? I didn't even see him go. Ugh, yeah. Looks like he did. I shrug my shoulders. It's nothing unusual for him. He acts like a ghost sometimes. It's just who he is. I give everyone a big wave before taking off. I'll see everyone later. The pain in my back feels like it's twisting. What the hell is wrong with me? Without a second thought, I make a beeline for the dorm entrance. Ben, hold up. My ears perk up when I hear someone gaining on me. Huh? I'm heading for the dorm too. 
don't feel like going through counseling either. Hell no. Last time I went to a counselor, they tried to put me in independent study. Fuck him. Be my guest then. I slow my pace down so he can catch up. Just between you and me, though, psychologists kind of give me the creeps. Really? Yeah. Who knows what kind of psychic powers they're using to dig into your mind? The last thing I want to do is get manipulated, you know? Hmm. Yeah. One of those weird thoughts passes through my mind. I think I get where you're coming from. I'd say one of my biggest fears is someone taking control of my actions. Like a puppet? Bleh. He shakes theatrically. Yeah. Like a puppet. After sliding my car, we... Card. <laughs> We walk through the we walk through the door together and stand at the door at the foot of the stairs. Some weekend, huh? Ugh. Don't remind me. I can't wait to just put this all behind me. Word. He ascends the steps ahead of me and stops at the first floor. Well, I'm gonna get some rest. Got a lot of stuff I need to do tomorrow. <laughs> he holds a hand out towards me. It's been nice hanging out with you, Ben. I feel my stomach flutter up. Without wasting a moment and letting it get awkward, I shake his hand. Th thanks. It's almost enough to distract me from the pain in my back. In spite of everything that happened today, I'm glad you were there. Y you are? Yeah. This time, he seems to be the one holding back a blush. Um, well, I mean it. A lot's been happening in my life lately. It's nice to know I have someone I can rely on. Th <laughs> That's right. You can count on this panda to be there be there for you. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. I can tell his smile is genuine and not forced right now. Good night, Ben. Good night, Brian. <laughs>